Please welcome Westchester University President, Dr. Christopher Fiorentino. Faculty, staff, students, and members of the administration, good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. We are also pleased to have with us a variety of university partners and friends, State Representative Carolyn Comida, State Rep. Thank you. State Representative Christina Sappi. Westchester Mayor Diane Herron. <laughs> Borough of Westchester Council President Diane LeBold. <laughs> Mark Yoder, President and CEO of the Greater Westchester Chamber of Commerce. and Malcolm Johnstone, Executive Director of the Westchester Business Improvement District. We are honored by your presence here today. First, I would like to thank everyone who donated to our food drive. We've teamed up with Aramark to restock our university resource pantry. Your support is vitally important to the pantry which works to eliminate barriers to degree completion for students with financial hardship. I'm very proud of Westchester's culture of service, and today's food drive is just one more indication of how much our campus community cares for its own and for others. In the past, I've always tried to approach my welcome back address as a big, energetic celebration of all the outstanding work we are doing at Westchester. Those celebrations have traditionally involved lots of people, sharing lots of sensational stories, and they've been accompanied by the exhilarating sights and sounds of a full multimedia show. Breaking from that tradition, today, you just get me. <laughs> I recognize that may be the poorest pitch ever for a speech, but I think this approach makes the most sense for the kind of talk I want to have with each of you today. I want to focus on a topic that not only impacts each of you as individuals, but all of us collectively as a community of educators who have helped to shape Westchester University into an institution that is recognized as one of the best universities in the nation, a place that supports our community, a place that above all ensures that our students succeed. Today, I want to talk about all the big changes that are being contemplated for the state system of higher education. I know that proposals for big changes tend to create equally big concerns for those on the receiving end of those changes. I think by now most of you know about my talk at Tanglewood Luncheons, the forum I created for connecting with small groups of employees, students, and other stakeholders to listen to your thoughts about Westchester and how we can make this institution even better than it already is. When I invited members of the manager's community to a talk at Tanglewood last spring, just when the system redesign was first being talked about, the response was overwhelming. 80 of the nearly 250 non-represented employees on campus signed up for one of the 16 spots at the table. When the lunch began, the tension was palpable but everyone just chatted about the food and the unseasonably cool spring weather. No one said a word about what was really on their minds until I broke the ice. And then the floodgates opened and people shared their concerns for their livelihoods, their career hopes, and for this institution that they care very deeply about. That luncheon reminded me of the deep affection that so many of us hold for this institution. Of course, there was concern for one's job, but there was also concern for what might happen to this place. Westchester University is in a position of great strength. Strength based on the people who work here. 
I heard concern that change could weaken us. Today, I want to be certain to do justice to those concerns. Given the changes that are being contemplated for the state system, I want to focus my talk on two fundamental questions. Where do I see Westchester University today? And where do I see our university tomorrow? In some ways, the question of where do I see Westchester University today is a misleading question. Misleading because it paints a static picture of our university. That's not at all how I see Westchester. Instead, I see us as an institution that is constantly in motion. Perhaps the best time to see Westchester in motion is between classes. Stand in the quad on any weekday and you will observe a sea of students in motion. Some talking to classmates, some checking their cell phones, some listening to music, but all in motion, all moving somewhere. Just like the wave of students making its way across campus between classes, Westchester is an academic institution in constant motion, constantly moving forward. And all that motion has brought us a very long way. Over the years, Westchester University has grown into a simply outstanding academic institution with a tremendously talented faculty and an astoundingly adept staff. As I watch the work you're all doing each day, I'm continually amazed at how much your efforts have moved and continue to move our university forward. We can see Westchester's forward movement in our strong enrollments. The demographics of eligible high school graduates has been in a steady state of decline, making it more difficult for universities to grow or even maintain enrollment. Even with these demographic challenges, Westchester has achieved consistent growth. From fall 2013 to fall 2018, our undergraduate enrollment has increased by 6% and our graduate enrollment increased by 39%. Final numbers are not yet in, but we already know that this fall's enrollment exceeds last year's. We can see how far Westchester has moved forward by our outstanding retention rate and six-year graduation rate, which far exceed the national average. Westchester University continues to move forward in obtaining prestigious professional accreditations. Most recently, our Doctor of Psychology, or PsyD, has now earned accreditation from the American Psychological Association. Our PsyD program is one of only two APA accredited doctoral programs in clinical psychology offered at a public institution in Pennsylvania. It's one of only nine accredited clinical psychology doctorates at a public university nationwide, making us among the most affordable accredited clinical PsyD programs in the United States. We can see how far Westchester has come in the launching of our new biomedical engineering program, which is a field of study that impacts all of us. If you or someone you know wears an insulin pump or simply ever had a blood pressure reading conducted, then you can thank biomedical engineers for helping to create and continually improve these medical technologies. To support all of our recent growth, we'll be opening the Sciences and Engineering Center and the Commons in fall 2020. At 175,000 square feet, this facility will become our largest academic space on campus, a title now held by the recently opened Business and Public Management Center. To be clear, while I said that today's address would not be the usual celebratory event, I very much believe that our university has much to celebrate. When I think of all the motion across our campus, it is not random motion. It is motion with a reason, with a purpose. That purpose all revolves around student success. From the moment our students first walk on campus until the moment they walk across the stage on commencement day, we are helping them move forward so they become more knowledgeable, more thoughtful, more ethical, and more able to engage inclusively in a diverse society. Individuals like Ju Ato, a senior psychology major 
who recently was featured in my Success Starts Here series. Jua had never picked up a rugby ball until she arrived at Westchester. Last year, she was named to the Women's Collegiate All-Americans, which consists of the best female college rugby players in the nation. She performs more than 200 hours of community service annually and maintains a 3.91 GPA. And Tyler Haney, a senior history major who transferred to Westchester specifically because we offer the DCAP program, which provides support to the students on the autism spectrum. After graduation, Tyler would like to work in a museum. Today, he works in our newly opened RAM shop, which prepares DCAP students for the workforce. And then there's Joylene Jefferson, a junior who is the vice president of the Westchester University Gospel Ministries and has been recognized as a Lawrence A. Dowdy emergent leader. Joylene was supported by social workers during her youth in foster care. And she chose to major in the field of social work so she too can make a difference in the lives of others. Joylene continues to be supported through the PROMISE program, the university's support program for foster and homeless youth. <laughs> These stories of successful students are not isolated cases. I say that with confidence because we also have broad-based data that attest to the fact that we are doing a very good job. Recently, Money Magazine using a rigorous ranking system that considers the quality of an education, the affordability of an education, and the outcomes of an education, rated Westchester University as the top public university in Pennsylvania. Get ready to applause again. A ranking that puts us ahead of Penn State, ahead of Temple, ahead of Pitt, and ahead of all of our sister institutions in the state system. All the motion on our campus that leads to so much student success comes from all of you. Continually turning out successful students means continually bringing in new students. Every year, we need to find about 4,000 such terrific students to replace our departing graduates. You can't attract terrific students to our campus without well-maintained buildings, without well-manicured grounds, without well-equipped classrooms, and without well-prepared meals. We can't get those terrific students off to a good start at Westchester unless they experience a well-run new student orientation program. We can't keep those terrific students happy and productive at Westchester unless there is a well-built and well-managed IT infrastructure that can manage their multitude of devices and monumental data needs. We can't move those terrific students to success at Westchester unless they're able to obtain the help of well-qualified staff in offices within the Student Affairs Division, in the Registrar's Office, Financial Aid Office, Bursar's office, Veterans office, Counseling Center, and every other of the many student support offices on this campus. During my time as president, I've enjoyed blogging about my job shadow experiences. I've been shadowing employees all over campus so as to better understand the critical work that every member of our campus community performs. I've been a custodian for a day, a band director for a day, and many other jobs for a day. And I always learn something new. <clears throat> These experiences remind me that I'm not the one doing the heavy lifting to make this institution what it is. It is you who do that. 
it is you or one of your fellow employees who is cutting the grass in 90 degree weather and shoveling snow in a blizzard. Perhaps you are the first face a student sees when they walk into an office looking like a deer caught in the headlights. You are the one to answer their questions, direct them to where they need to go, and perhaps most importantly at that moment in time, give them a friendly smile and reassure them. I hear positive stories about our employees all the time. Just last week, a parent let me know that university security officers, Ron Maurer and Hi Tim Ben Musa, go out of their way to build positive connections with the residents of Brandywine Hall. They learn students' names, what they're majoring in, and how their day's been going. Ron and Hi Tim are sticklers for the rules, as they need to be, yet their manner is always respectful. They strive to stay upbeat and engaged throughout their workday even though their day doesn't end until 4 a.m. Ron and Hi Tim are here with us today working a rare day shift. Thank you, Ron and Hi Tim, for all that you do. As essential members of Westchester's community of educators, Ron and Hi Tim know that advancing student success is what their jobs are all about. It's what every job on this campus is all about. Whatever your role, your job title, your day-to-day -day responsibilities, know that your work is vitally important. Certainly, our students can't be successful unless they have great professors. And we have built up an amazing, passionate faculty who are continually finding highly innovative and impressive ways to impact their students. Faculty members like Joan Welch, who developed a GIS geodatabase to map the street trees in the borough last year. She teamed up with the grad student and two undergrads for this project, which resulted in significant data about the multiple benefits of these street trees such as the fact that they sequester 625,000 pounds of carbon dioxide annually. Connie Dreger, the graduate student involved in the project, earned her degree and is now working in the field of GIS in Portland, Oregon. The two undergraduate researchers, Eric Chapman and Kimmy Kutzler, are with us here today. Kimmy earned her bachelor's degree and is now working on her graduate degree and is a sustainability graduate assistant on campus. And then there's Chiwaneso Tanago, who has been recognized for excellence in student advising and is involved in efforts to improve student advisement campus-wide. Last February, I hosted a luncheon for Chiwaneso and some of the students who traveled with her to Uganda for a research and community service project. It was clear that this study abroad program was life-changing for the students, and it wouldn't have been possible without Chiwaneso. And on top of that, Chiwaneso received a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for another research project that is based in Zimbabwe. Thank you, Joan and Chiwaneso, for the important work you do with our students. All the motion created by all the related work done by faculty and staff across our campus is needed to move our students to success. So again, while I said that I would not be delivering a celebratory address, I still very much believe that we have much to celebrate. And while I broke from tradition by foregoing our usual welcome back event, I would like to start a new tradition today. When we began our partnership with Saxby's Coffee, we learned about their practice of featuring mission moments during meetings. <clears throat> mission moments are opportunities for members of the Saxby's team 
to recognize those individuals who have done something above and beyond in support of the mission. So with that inspiration in mind, today I would like to announce that each year we will recognize mission makers at this annual event. Mission makers are those individuals whose work in support of the university's mission can only be described as exceptional. Today, we recognize the following mission makers. Dr. Rodney Mader, Dr. Josh Ald, Dr. Shannon Murkic, and Dr. Lisa Murano. Over the course... <laughs> Over the course of nearly 24 months, they have provided outstanding leadership for the first-year experience that almost every one of our more than 2,800 first-year students are currently engaged in this semester. They have assembled a team of 70 dedicated faculty members and have created a first-year experience that we expect will not only have an enormous impact on retention and graduation rates, but also better help students to navigate the next four years. Please join me again in congratulating Drs. Mader, Ald, Merkic, and Murano as our first mission makers. <laughs> Speaking of our mission, we would like to announce that October 24th and October 30th will be designated as mission days for the fall 2019 semester, which are intended to give the entire campus community an opportunity to weigh in on the ways Westchester University is fulfilling its mission, or to share ideas about how we could be doing that better. These days are an important part of our Middle States Commission on Higher Education self-study process. We want this to be an inclusive process that all members of our community feel connected to. As you exit the hall today, look for someone with an Ask Me About Middle States sticker for a copy of the self-study design and a card that asks you for input on a series of related topics. I encourage each of you to participate as much as possible in this important process. So if that's where we are today, what do I see in store for Westchester of tomorrow? It's hard to know exactly what tomorrow will look like for our university because of all the big changes that are currently being contemplated for the state system. While we don't yet know the specifics of those changes, we do know a bit about the general direction. For example, concepts like shared services and a sharing system are being studied to examine the extent to which functions currently handled locally might be provided at a shared service center in pursuit of cost efficiency. Understandably, all of this talk of centralization and consolidation has concerned many on campus who worry that consolidating their job basically means eliminating their job. Again, let me emphasize that we don't yet know specifics of what these changes to the state system will look like once they are fully implemented. But even without specifics, people are concerned. So I want to talk about how I intend to respond to the possible state system changes and how I hope we together will react to these changes. Today, I've spoken quite a bit about all the motion I see on our campus. But to understand my response to any forthcoming state system changes, I need to bring another related concept, momentum. As you know, Momentum has to do with the force of a movement. Large, strong objects moving forward at substantial speeds have a great deal of momentum. Think of asteroids traversing their way across space. They are large, they are solid and sturdy, and they move at incredible speeds. These massive, speedy objects possess tremendous amounts of momentum as they hurl through space. When such an object has built up a great deal of momentum, it's pretty hard to stop its forward progress, and it's not such a good idea to try. I see Westchester University as a university that is not only in constant motion, 
but is also moving with a great deal of momentum. That momentum partly comes from our size. Westchester, with its more than 17,500 students, falls in the top 10% of American universities when ordered by size. That momentum partly comes from our strength, strength that comes from delivering an exceptional education at a reasonable cost. That momentum partly comes from the speed at which we are improving and innovating, a speed that has simply astounded me over the past decade. The momentum we have built up at Westchester University is created and sustained by all of the interconnected work that is being done across our campus, work that is being done by all of you. As president, I want to do more than sustain our momentum. I want to strengthen that momentum. As president, I must also recognize that we are a member of a larger organization. And we have benefited greatly from being a member of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. I therefore want to make certain that Westchester University remains a good citizen within that system and that we are committed to preserving and improving that system. And as a practical matter, PASHI is technically one large organization. Westchester is better off if our sister universities are successful. But on that front, let me also share a few thoughts with you, thoughts that I've been sharing repeatedly with anyone in Harrisburg who is willing to listen. It is my firm belief that the state system will not grow stronger by implementing any changes that make Westchester University weaker. The state system will not become more successful by implementing changes that make Westchester University less successful. And the state system will not move forward by implementing changes that attempt to halt the forward momentum that we have been building at Westchester University. As president, while I will insist that Westchester, Westchester University does its part to make the system stronger, I will oppose any state system changes that make Westchester University weaker. You all know me, and if you know me at all, you know how I am committed to our university. I have spent my entire professional career here, and as long as I am here, I will do all that I can to protect our institution and to ensure that it keeps moving forward with great momentum. That's my general perspective as president on how I need to respond to any forthcoming state system changes. How do we need to respond as a university community? While this may sound overly simplistic, I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing. As I have said, what we have been doing has been working and it has generated tremendous momentum at our university. Momentum that is moving our students to ever increasing levels of success. More than anything else, we must work together to keep that momentum going. I could tell you to focus less on what is going on in Harrisburg and focus more on what is going on at Westchester University, but I know that's a difficult ask. Instead, what I ask of each of you is to trust that my senior leadership team and I will do everything possible to effectively advocate for Westchester University at the state system level. We will work tirelessly, endlessly, and relentlessly in that regard so you can focus more on advancing our mission, our strategic plan, and our institutional priorities, ensuring that our new first-year experience courses are excellent experiences for our new students providing the best possible co-curricular experiences for our students, continuing to do all the things that will strengthen our momentum. We need to keep our focus on everything we can do to ensure the success of our students. The good news is that focusing on our students' success lies firmly within our control, and we need to focus most on what we control and try to worry a little less about what we can. 
If we continue in all the interconnected spaces spread across our campus to keep doing all the work that needs to be done to graduate successful students, then Westchester University will continue to move forward with great momentum. As long as we move forward with great momentum, it will be very difficult for anything to impede our progress. And together, we will continue to make our students more successful, to make our university more successful, and to make the state system more successful. Thank you. Now, I, I would like to, to invite you to join Sue and me on the quad for some refreshments. And again, thank you all for attending today. <laughs>